Under what circumstances may a contracting party avoid a contract on the grounds of mental incompetency? We explore that question in the case In Re Seminole Walls and Ceilings Corporation. Seminole Walls and Ceilings filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The case was later converted to Chapter 7, and Carla Musselman was appointed as the bankruptcy trustee. One of the bankruptcy estate's primary assets was an alleged interest in a collection of photographs taken by Joseph Jasker, known as the Jasker Collection. However, the nature and extent of Seminole's interest in the Jasker Collection was disputed. In an attempt to limit litigation on that point, the trustee sought to settle with Jasker. Jasker was represented by counsel during the settlement negotiations, which lasted for several months. Ultimately, the parties executed a settlement agreement on January 14, 2005. The agreement provided that to the extent either Jasker or the trustee had or obtained legal title to the Jasker collection, the trustee would sell it and share a portion of the proceeds with Jasker. A notary witnessed Jasker's execution of the settlement agreement. In March, the parties executed an amended settlement agreement to correct certain minor errors in the original agreement. A notary again witnessed Jasker's signature. Moreover, Jasker's attorney advised him to sign the amended settlement agreement. Five months after signing the amended settlement agreement, Jasker was declared mentally incompetent, and Martin Staninick was appointed as Jasker's limited guardian. Before the bankruptcy court could rule on the trustee's motion to approve the settlement with Jasker, Staninick sought to rescind the agreement. Among other things, Staninick argued that the settlement agreement was unenforceable because Jasker was incompetent when he executed both the original and the amended versions. Evidence adduced before the bankruptcy court established that Jasker was admitted to the hospital for a possible miniature stroke in early January 2005. Jasker was released several days later, at which point he returned home and continued living independently as he had before. None of the individuals who witnessed Jasker sign the agreements voiced any concerns regarding his competency. Notably, Staninick assisted Jasger during the negotiations and confirmed in writing that he believed Jasger was lucid in early January. Following a bench trial, the bankruptcy court proceeded to issue its opinion.